Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shayla. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I um, am recreating something that I saw on YouTube and I just thought was genius um, and kind of putting my own little spin on it. Um, so this video that I had seen, it was from Junk Journal Ideas with Donna. Um, in her YouTube channel, and she was actually recreating it from a video uh, from Shabby Dabby Duda, which is also another YouTube channel. So I saw it, I fell in love with it, I had to show you guys, and my method is actually a no sewing machine method, um, just because I, I have a sewing machine, but I didn't honestly want to hook it up and use it, um, <laughs> uh, and mess with the threads and everything like that. So um, mine is a no sew way, but basically what it is, is it's a cluster book. So this is the prototype. It is very non-decorated, um, nothing super crazy, but um, I, it's just 12 by 12 pieces of scrapbook paper. And I just did a simple binding on the side, um, like how you would bind signatures into a junk journal. Um, and it's six pages in total. So... Um, I did the first page, so you just fold the pages over, um, and you'll see that I do my orientation a certain way, um, and then I have the middle right here. So, this was the first page. Um, essentially, I had a lot of leftover paper from making signature pages, um, or signatures, and I used those scraps to make these adorable little clusters and it almost looks like it's a collection, like it should belong um, together in a journal, you know, which I thought was kind of neat as far as my organized brain goes. <laughs> um, so I made these little guys based off of what I had at my desk and I think they turned out pretty well. Um, I'll bring them up just a little bit so you can see. But I use some handmade paper, that is some cheesecloth. Um, and then of course we have some little printables here and then just some scrap paper. So that's what that was the first page. And basically it's a kind of a way to store your clusters and also look at them. Um, and when you wanna use them, you can either tear them out or you could cut them out. So, and then the background here is actually part of the cluster, which I thought was really genius. Um, so it's a good way to get rid of your 12 by 12 scrapbook paper if you have quite a bit of it like I do. Um, I will say for this project, 12 by 12 paper is going to work best so you can have a lot of clusters on one page. However, you could definitely do, um, you know, like copy paper and you could distress the edges of that um, and fold it over kind of hamburger style um, and that, that could still have the same effect. You would just have the less of the clusters on a page, but just some options there. Um, what I did is I actually did use a, um, double sided 12 by 12 scrapbook paper for the cover just to make it look nice. Um, you know, this is mostly for me, but I do, I would like for it to look nice, at least a little bit. <laughs> so um, I used a double-sided 12 by 12 sheet for the cover. And then for the inner sheets, since I have a lot of single-sided um, patterned 12 by 12 paper where it's just blank on one side, um, I folded them outwards. So that way, as I'm flipping through, um, the clusters will be on the right-hand side. And then, of course, when we get to the middle, which is right here, I'll flip over to this side and do the same thing. So we're still using kind of all of the pages. Um, so that's kind of my plan. I'll, enough talking, I'll show you how to make one of these really quickly and then we'll decorate a page together um, with some clusters. So I already have um, set aside some 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and um, these are kind of the ones I chose. So these are gonna be my inner ones. I have that one, the pink one, and you can use funky ones too. I think that kind of, you know, gives you a little bit of a challenge. Um, and clusters really can be, you know, they, it can be any paper. So don't feel limited. Use up the papers maybe you're less likely to use in other projects. Um, that way they still get some use out of them. 
And then for the cover here, I did choose um, this paper. It is double-sided. So I think I will probably put this on the outside and then we'll do the green on the inside. Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna fold all of our papers in half. So we'll start there. I hope y'all are having a great day. Hopefully you're making one of these. These are, this was actually really fun to make. I will say I enjoyed it. Um, and it's okay if your fold isn't perfect. I mean, this is just kind of a fun craft. Um, I mean, if you're planning on like selling these somehow, then maybe, maybe make them a little more perfect. But so instead of folding this way, I'm going to fold the opposite way. So the pattern side out. So let's fold that. Okay. And so I'm just going to do that for all of them. Okay. And you could make these even bigger. You could do, instead of six pages, you could do, um, you know, eight pages or ten pages and just have like a massive um, little leaflet book of clusters. That would be really fun. Maybe you could do like color coding. I don't know. I'm just saying there's so many ideas. <laughs> um, so let's see. We're getting there. And of course, if um, the orientation of your pattern is a certain way, definitely fold it that way. Like for example, I think it would look better this way. So I'll fold it this way. Okay, perfect. So we have them all folded. So since this is the cover, it's just going to stay as is. This is just um, 12 by 12 folded in half. So six, six and six, basically. However, these guys, I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off of the edge, just so that way they actually fit inside my book. And I don't have to worry about any of them peeking out. So let me grab my trimmer. Okay, which I actually have on the floor. The life of a crafter. Okay, so set that one aside. So then I'm just gonna move it um, from the six line. Hopefully you can see that. From the six line, I'm just gonna go one line up. So it's basically five and three fourths or 5.75. Um, I'm just trimming off a quarter of an inch for all of them. And then these you can actually keep and use um, in your clusters too. So don't get rid of things so fast. Okay. And then we have this one. And you could probably do two at a time. I'm just, I, I don't know if I have that much faith in myself. So we're just going to go slow and do one at a time. Perfect. Okay. So that's it. That's all you'll need of the trimmer. So yay, we're done. Um, now we're going to put this guy together. And so when we put them together, I am going to uh, get some paper clips, two big paper clips here. And that will hold it in place while I make my holes. So um, there's no really rhyme or reason to orientation, just uh, or, you know, which one should go first. Obviously, the cover should be the cover. But besides that, it shouldn't matter too much. So I'm just going to kind of place them in here. Okay. Okay. Now that I have those placed, I just want to make sure that they are nice and even with each other. I don't see anyone's crazily poking out or anything. And then I'm going to put one paper clip here and then flip it over and put one paper clip 
right here just so I know that they stay in place um, with the line. Now I'm gonna fold it in half and it is a little chunky. So I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna flatten it out a little bit just to make those folds nice and crisp or as crisp as they can be. Perfect. Do it on the other side maybe. There we go. Just like that. So it's a lot, it feels a lot thinner there, which is nice. And then now um, you can put, I would, well, I'd probably recommend putting some sort of place marker where you want your holes. Um, I just kind of winged it. It's totally up to you on how you feel. <laughs> so go with what you feel. I'm using the Cropodile um, 2. I think this is the Cropodile Big Bite. Um, and it basically will punch holes. It sets kind of like eyelets for you. Um, it's a really neat tool if you're able to get your hands on one. It makes punching holes so, so much more simpler. If you don't have that or you don't have access to get one of these, something that is a lot more affordable, and let me find it. Um, oh, you know what? It's over here. Sorry. Something that's a little more affordable is going to be some, it's called an owl. It's spelled A as in apple, W as in walrus, and L as in Larry. <laughs> um, but an owl, it's essentially a pokey tool. Um, it's used for book binding to make holes. That's what its purpose is for. Um, I got this one off of Amazon for $4, so it's not too bad. Um, and it stays pretty sharp. Like this guy is still incredibly sharp and I've used it a lot. Um, another, if you don't want to go out and buy anything, maybe you live to where you need this tool, but an ice pick, you can use an ice pick. Um, you could possibly even use a nail and a hammer, just throwing things out there. Um, you never know <laughs> what you can come up with. We are resourceful. We're crafters. So that's just an option today though. I'm not going to go survival mode and I'm just going to punch my holes with my crocodile. So super easy. And I know you can't really see the whole punching process, but you'll see the holes afterwards. Okay. Here's one. Takes a lot of focus. Okay, there's two, and I'm just gonna flip this over to the other side, and then we'll punch one. Right about. There we go, three. Okay, so we can move that out of the way. We have our three holes, they are punched neatly. I can see through them all. Um, and now we need to pick out some thread. I usually use embroidery floss um, to bind my journals or my signatures to my journals. Um, and then I use a, I think it's called a darning needle. Basically it's a thick needle um, with a huge like eye hole for the floss. Um, and it's kind of blunt, so it's not really sharp. Um, so let me grab that. Okay. And then showing off a little bit, this is my um, Harry Potter little sewing box that I love so very much. Okay, so we have right here, this is the needle. Um, it is a, I believe it's called a darning needle. If that's not it, please let me know because I feel like I've been saying that. <laughs> and now I'm going to pick out a color. Um, it does not have to match, you know, it can just be whatever you'd like for it to be. I'm going to see what we have over here. Don't judge me on my embroidery floss. I kind of like that one. I think that would look neat. Okay, let's go with that. Put this back in there and we'll shut that for now. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're just going to bind this really quick. So I'm gonna, I always open these wrong. So let's 
let's see, where is the end? Is it? No, that's not it. You have to find the end. Oh, okay. Nope. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> ah, I'm trying to avoid tangling it. I found it. Okay. So then you hold it. Oh no. It's tangled. Okay. We will do our best. All right. So opening it up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to three times the length of this book. So one, and then I'll pinch it, and then two and then pinch it, and then three. So I know I need to cut about right there. My scissors. Okay. So I have my string, and let's get the needle here. So I'm gonna start making sure that this looks fine. Okay, it does. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna put my, hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna start and I'm by putting my floss in here. And I'm not gonna tie a knot or anything, it's just gonna be kind of loose. So I just have a loose string and I'm holding it. Then I'm gonna go through the middle hole right here. Okay, to the other side. Easy peasy. Pull it almost all the way through and I'm gonna leave it about right there. Now, going on the outside to come inside, I'm gonna go to the top one, the top hole I made, and I'm gonna go through the outside into the inside, and make sure this one doesn't come through the other end. So I'll just pull it all the way. And then from the top hole, I'm gonna go down to the bottom hole, and I'm gonna go in to out, Okay, and same thing, we're gonna pull, but leave this string, make sure the string doesn't come um, through that middle hole. So now we have this one and it's on the outside at the bottom hole. I'm gonna go back up through the middle hole, but through the outside to the inside. And then I wanna make sure that I pop out on the left side of this middle string, so Pulling, 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 and now we can remove the needle and set that aside. And then we can take our strings here and adjust and pull so it's nice and, nice and taut. And then we're gonna make a knot. So however you make a knot, if you make a knot the traditional way, if you do, I don't know, some crazy knot, go for it. We just want to make sure that it is tied down. That middle string is tied down with these two other strings. And I just kind of do like three knots. That's my nothing fancy. Um, just like that. And then all I do is I just cut a little bit just so there's not so much string hanging. And now we can remove our paper clips. And we should have an adorable, super cute little flip through book that we can make clusters on. So there we go, and that's it. It's super, super easy. Um, so now let's make some clusters. So we'll start with this first page here. And I think I have, I have this really pretty gold paper maybe we'll use that or maybe we'll use this blue interesting tree paper um i also have a bunch of scraps pull out your scraps these are a lot of like scrapbook paper scraps or scraps that have a lot of imagery on them in color and then i have more of my neutral scraps right here which is like my coffee dyed paper um i have some grid paper music paper um, just kind of more plain paper. So I usually like to start with the plain paper as my base and I'll kind of pick one 
that I think has like a pretty good size to it. Um, just so I can build on it. It's not necessary to do that, but um, I find that it's a little bit easier to work with. So I pulled out some different options. Um, I think we could go for, what do we think? I mean, we could try, let's just do the coffee dye paper. Okay, so all I do is I just kind of, you know, it's mindless. Um, so I just like rip some papers. Okay, it does not have to have any sort of rhyme or reason to it. That's the joy of it. It's just kind of doing what you feel. Okay, so we have those. I ran out, so let me see if I have more. If not, we'll switch to another paper. Um, let's see. You know, I kind of wanted to do some with these. This is actually from a calendar piece. The other side is kind of blank, which is why it was in there, but I want to use this side, I think. So we'll try doing some of these too. I think that'll be fun. Okay, I guess I'll leave those like that and then we'll do this one there and that one like that. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have those, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down. So I'm taking this, this is just my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Um, I did put it in a Sugar Bell icing piping bottle. Um, several YouTubers who use the same type of glue, the Beacon glues, they use it in a piping bottle. Um, and let me say, I am converted. I love it in the piping bottle. I just get like a nice little thin stream, um, which is super nice. So I don't use as much. It is not a cheap glue. Um, just like the Fabrifix and stuff like that. So yeah, you can glue these down. I was thinking if you wanted, um, if you wanted to, you know, remove your clusters without having the backing for whatever reason, like if you're just want a placeholder and not necessarily the design, you could maybe use some like adhesive dots or something. Those tend to, I feel like peel off okay. Um, or like, I don't know if there's some sort of repositionable tape that could work different options, just throwing them out there. Okay. There's another one. Okay, so I have those all glued down. They already look cute the way they are, but let's add some color. So let's try out these, um, this like handmade paper. Kind of rip off some. And they all don't have to be the same, so. Let's see. Kind of like that there. I try not to think about it too much. Sometimes it is hard though, I will say. Maybe. Sorry, I'm not trying to go quiet on y'all. <laughs> All right, we have those. And then I'm gonna go to my little, move these out of the way, my little scrap box here. Hopefully you can kind of see. Um, and see if there's, I like this paper. Maybe we could do some, um, okay. 
Okay. And I'm not really thinking about this too much. Um, okay, so we have those. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the second layer. Okay. You could definitely build these first um, and then glue it down all at the end. That's what I did the first time around. I'm just trying something different to see if it's faster or more efficient. You never know. So but I'm just kind of plopping them down there, not thinking too hard. There we go. I really like that handmade paper. It's really pretty. And sometimes I don't glue off, glue on, <laughs> glue off. Sometimes I don't glue on the whole um, piece just because I kind of want it to have that 3D element. So sometimes I do that. Okay, so we have those, which already look really cool and inspiring. Um, I think now we need, let's see, I have this like really pretty piece. We might use that. Um, I have a little bit of cheesecloth here. I'm just going to cut off like a decent sized piece. You really don't need much cheesecloth, I will say. Um, because you can stretch it out. So just showing you what, what I mean by that is, and you have to be careful because it will just like start unraveling on you. So I take that and then you can just take a piece like that. And then I just like to like set it on there. So... That one I think would look better there. And it just gives it like a little bit of dimension without um, without being like super excessive and oh, the girth of it, if that makes sense. And they start looking like little mini art masterpieces which is just so cool. You can dye cheesecloth too um, with like tea or coffee so you get more of like a brownish tint to it instead of white, but we're just using it out of the package. And I kind of just set it down. There is no real rhyme or reason to it, nor does there have to be. There we go, perfect, okay. So I'm going to go ahead, this is tricky to glue this on, only because um, it's very fragile. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue, okay, and then we're just going to kind of plop it down. And I kind of just gently tap it because it will start to stick to your fingers, so you got to be careful. There we go. It's like the way of the cheesecloth. It has its own little mind. You just have to kind of go with it. <laughs> uh, but it looks neat. I think cheesecloth looks really cool. Let me 
go. Okay, light little taps. one okay perfect okay so now they immediately have a little bit excuse me more dimension so I have some of this I don't know if I want to use it or not let's see how it looks Oh, I think that's going to look really good. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it kind of just looks like little watercolors, which is exactly what I wanted. And it's so neat, like you can create clusters from, what was that, three sheets of paper, three scrap sheets of paper. Super, super cool. So I'm just taking this little paper here and making little kind of rough circle things out of it and just putting them on places. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Just like that. I'm really liking how this is turning out. Okay. And you could even ink these up to make them more, like have more dimension if you wanted to. It's definitely just whatever your heart desires. Okay. I'm hoping, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm doing that out of camera and I don't mean to. You just get so used to you know, working close and I honestly, I wear contacts, so I feel like half the time I can't even see what I'm doing, but I mean, I can, my prescription's up to date, <laughs> but nobody worry. Um, I'm good, but still. Okay. Almost there. All right. Cover up that one. And then last one. These are so much fun to make. I guess that one looks cute there. Perfect. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness, those look so artistic. Okay, so we use some of that, or most of it basically. I'll get rid of that. Um, so we have these beautiful little things that we have made. So what I did after that um, is I added kind of a focal point 
and I used these printables. Um, so I'll kind of show you. I'm so sorry, I forgot where these are from. Um, but I did a whole video on my printables uh, that I buy or that I bought. So these are in that video. So go to my YouTube channel <laughs> if you want to know more. There's only one um, printable, I guess, haul video. So yeah, I just kind of took these. These are pre-cut. I cut these out, um, which took forever, but that's another story. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like put them on places that I think they would look good. So we're going to do that. Can't tell if this one's like too big or not. I kind of liked it over here, I think. I think it looks good right there. Okay. So put some glue on it. Just stick it down. Beautiful. So that one to me is done. You could definitely add more stuff to it later, like some stickles. Um, you could do like some little gem embellishments or something. Really anything. That one's really cool. Okay, we'll do that one for that one. Number one. All right. There's that one. Let's see, what else do we have? We have a tiny little two. That one's kind of cute there. We could also do it right there. But then it's close to the 27. So I don't know. Um... I like the two right there. Okay. It found a home. Beautiful. Okay. I have a 73. That one's huge. Can be like under this. Huh. There's a little tiny C215. Okay, I like that one there. Pre pretty. Um, okay, we need to find one for this one. I do see this little 792 it's kind of cool um oh, that's a bigger 792 Ooh, I kind of like it tucked under there okay let's do that all right just tuck it under here Beautiful. And then the cheesecloth kind of just comes over it. That one's neat. Okay. We have a few more to decorate. Um, I feel like those maybe should have something different. So hang on just a second. I do have some more printables. These are words. I don't know if these are going to fit. They might be a little big, but... Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, these are going to be probably too big. But it was worth looking. Let me see one more thing here. I'm sure you can hear my chair creaking and everything. <laughs> It's an older chair. So these are just some random little bits that I have. Um, these might be a little too pastel, but we will see. Also, they might be too big. 
Okay. Just kidding. I thought these were like stuck together. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Well, those are not going to work either. So instead, let's just put, we're just going to break out the stickles here because I have them. I'll show you these, show you my collection of stickles. So I'm just going to set them off to the side and let's see if we can add a few shiny things. Um, I have this green one that I really like. It's Ranger Lime Green. So I think let's do um, Beautiful. Okay, last one. This takes some patience. You got to just go up, down. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So we'll leave those as is. But we've decorated a whole page. Bring those up a little closer. You could definitely add more to these. But yeah, so that, that's kind of the general idea. And then when you're ready to use one, you just either rip it out um, or you can cut around it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked a certain um, cluster that I made, please let me know. Um, or if you made one yourself, I'd love to know if you were crafting with me. So leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please like it. So I know that you like it. Um, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when my next videos come out. But with that, I hope you guys have a great day crafting. And until the next one, bye.